It's 4 o'clock on a Monday, and you know what that means. It's time for another exciting episode of Taxi TV Live. This week, starring special guest star, Mr. Stephen Wesley Giles. Yeah, baby! Uh, welcome to the big show. <laughs> and hey, welcome to the well, big show. Thanks for having me. It's been a couple of years since Stephen was here. He's a local boy here in L.A., so we like having him over. What did I do with that chat room? There you guys are. All right, get rid of this other stuff. Be right with you. Um, okay, shrink that window. There we go. Hello, everybody. Okay, everything's good. We've got bandwidth. Uh, we've got the chat room live. Hello, Adriana, Amanda, we were just talking about you, Amber, Anna, Bob, boy, it's a, the females are all A's today, uh, Bob LaGrasso, Marcus, Caterbone, Cox and Vox, Dean Turner, Kino uh, Beats, yeah, that's Marcus, I know, oh, I know. Okay. yeah, yeah, I just, uh, just got a really nice email from his mom about an hour or so ago, jazz stands in there, so anyway, um, I'm flipping this over for the moment. Okay. Stephen right. has no idea what we're doing today. It's like a mystery. It is a mystery. Um, but, oh, what did I do with my... Well, while I'm looking for that, do this. <laughs> you want to yeah. look and I'll... What did I do? Where do I put this well, here, I'll, just, I'll, I'll steal one from you. Um, if you, you I, a sticker. Sure, go ahead. I had one already sitting over here. Okay, this subscribe. is... Subscribe. Subscribe. <laughs> Absolutely, and like us, because both of us are from L.A. We need all the positive stuff we can I get. really need feedback. I, it's some, uh, Yeah, if you, you just hit like on my face. I wonder if they made one of those, like, it looked like that, but it was actually <laughs> like really a cool. finger. Yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, here, I'll just toss those yes. babies over there. Okay, today's show is about... Mm. As you saw in the Swag. email, five things successful musicians do. But you know what? This is only four. So we will get to uh, number five. Five. I don't but know what number five is. You don't? He doesn't I have, have a clue. No clue. Uh, let's see. I had a note. Oh, I apologize. I, I misspelled his name uh, in the email that went out. Stephen with a PH instead of Stephen with a V. It's cool, That's man. Right. It's fine. It's got the V. It's a, it's got the name um, right, basically. So Stephen was in the dark, covered that. Uh, so, oh man, I forgot the drum roll. I was supposed to do. Oh, drum roll. And the and the horns. That's nice. Nice yes, touch. Little sting there. Oh, mm -hmm. and I want to just mention that if you go right now to newcoolnow.com and click on my face, it'll take you to stephenwesleygiles.com. Yeah. Is kind of hard to type in correctly. So if you go to newcoolnow. Dot com. Um, I have links. If you go to the my Stephen Wesley Giles site, I have links to all the songs we're going to play tonight and some resources. Okay. So you can sort of follow along at home or or check it out later. So I just kind of created like a little new cool now yeah. instead of old uncool yesterday. Yeah, that's right. It's the it's, complete opposite. It's the opposite of that. Um, okay. So uh, while the phrase write, submit, forget, and repeat, I think was created. By John Mazze or Matt I, Hurt. I'm not sure I which think, one. I think I think it was actually um, I think John. Yeah. As one of the first people that I saw writing that. Okay. And then. Commonly known as Maz to his fellow taxi members. Mazinator. Um, yep. Um, anyway, so uh, I see people walking around out there. It must be my fan club. They're stopping by to see if they get an autograph after the show. Um, okay, so write, submit, forget, and repeat became a meme. Right, it's a meme. And if you're a little fuzzy about what a meme actually is, here's a definition I found online. Mm. A meme is an element of a culture or a system of behavior that may be considered to be passed from one individual to another by non-genetic means. I could no <laughs> nookie there. Especially <laughs> imitation. So that means one person does it and then somebody else does it. So when you think about it, this is a meme. And in the email that I sent out talking about today's show, I said that you've done five things that um, have probably helped create successful musicians all over the world. And this, I believe, is for them. Because 
by making these stickers and passing them out at the Taxi Road Rally for the last couple of years at least, right? Mm -hmm. Two or three years. These things travel. So this is on somebody's uh, guitar case in Ireland. Yeah, I've seen them on many keyboards yeah. and studio setups. So you've created a meme, and then this causes people to walk up to the people who've got this on their keyboard or their studio or their guitar case and say, what does that mean? Write, submit, forget, and repeat. So, you know, most of the time, the people that are going to have that are going to actually know what that means because they're taxi members and they're part of the, the inside culture. But that's what I want to talk about first today is what write, submit, forget, and repeat means. So, um, uh, these are all elements that think about all the musicians that you've known in your lifetime that have not been successful, and yet they don't do this so maybe that's part so let's take them one at a time and let's talk about writing okay because he is the protagonist of the meme write submit forget and repeat I am I so that. he does <laughs> uh, and, and and Stephen lives here in LA where what actual town do you live I in? live in San Dimas home okay. of Bill and Ted's excellent adventures absolutely the phone booth is still there it's, it's in the still there Square, right, right? It's <laughs> solid gold and uh, yeah no I don't know that's no, not there but I've been known there to is either. a Circle K. In really? San Dimas, yes. <laughs> <laughs> no phone booth, but there is a Circle K. So, well, I go to a pizza joint in Agoura Hills, California, that has the one of the actresses from Bill and Ted's Excellent oh. Adventure. They've got their picture up on the wall. Oh, that's awesome. you know, to the pizza joint. So we're we're practically related. We're pra that like meme distance, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I want to know, um, going to writing first, write, submit, forget, and repeat. First of all, you do all kinds of music. Um, you yeah. do singer-songwriter stuff. He just played me some um, EDM. He's been known to do rock. How often do you write? I write a song every week. No, no almost no, except without an exception. I have. It's like I have to do it once a week, which takes me to. The, I'll just. I'm gonna pump, pump this for a second too. <laughs> it came with Jeez. a suitcase full. Of, Gee, guys, this is this is our group. Get your ass writing songs. Hey, man, and, this is a oh, fan sorry, show. Get your ace <laughs> writing songs. It's fine. And uh, without, I think that group, and I, I'll even go back a step further. Uh, February album writing month, fom dot org, is where I started. Okay. Uh, where I thought I had written like one song, you know, every year or two when I started writing songs. Like, I was literally just waiting to be inspired. Oh, and that man. did not happen very often. Yeah. It happened right when a show was coming up. I'd write a couple songs just so I had a couple new songs to play. So I got to FOM in 2008 and, and wrote 14 songs in 28 days, All right. which I've done every year since. Um, that started me thinking, oh, I can just turn it on and write stuff. Right. And then without judging myself, which took me, which then led to... Uh, Actually, before Gia's, I got into Taxi. Okay. And around 2012, I seriously joined Taxi. I think I went to one rally before then, probably in 2005 or something. I went with For those friend. of you who are not members, uh, the rally is the Taxi Road Rally, our convention that's free to members and their guests. Over Man, here. yeah, you got to go. You, you have to go. And I'll say what. It's a rule. It was a very different experience going as a non-member and just being there for a day as to going and staying and hanging out. Um, right. So when I went in 2005, it was like I went in. It was really cool. I learned some stuff. I was super overwhelmed. Yeah. And I didn't know anybody except for my one friend, that my friend Eric Schaus, who, who plays in a, a, a band with me back in the day. Okay. And, the band um, was called Back in the Day. It was called Push Start. <laughs> back in the day. Back in the day. I'm um, sorry. So uh, I think it's a Beastie Boys song. Uh, so then... Which led me to uh, G Oz, which uh, people right. in taxi. So Patty Boss. Okay. Uh, I think Paul Otten and I think even Ethan Okamura. They kind of we all started this thing based off of. Uh, it's called the songwriting challenge. That, right. Uh, I think like people like. Uh, oh gosh, he's a really good guitar player. He goes. He's barefoot all the time. Um, Jimmy Buffett. Not Jimmy <laughs> Buffett. No, he's younger. He's a little hipper, but not. He's kind of a bluesy. Uh, oh, I know. Somebody's got to tell, say what it is. But um, uh, anyway, yeah. he was in this. He's, he's, <laughs> there's a group of very well-known musicians who were challenging each other to write one song a week. And if you didn't 
finished the song, you got kicked out of their group. Wow. And so, oh, Ben Folds 5 was a part of it. Like, Ben Folds was a part of that group. And um, uh, so anyway, we decided we were going to make our own version of that. Okay. And it became Get Your Ass Writing Songs. And uh, we, uh, Patty and I have been running that ever since. Um, and now we have a whole bunch of people who help. Um, honestly, I don't do much now except submit my songs and just kind of help right. cheerlead. Um, but I have written one song every week. I think, I think with the exception of maybe once or twice in three years, I haven't missed a week writing a song. <laughs> that's what his wife so, had a baby or they that's on right, vacation. That's right. That's right. On vacation, I'll, I'll, sing into my, I'll sing into my iPhone. Right. And then I will find a way to get it in Dropbox and I'll stick a link. <laughs> I mean, I... Wow. It became, to me, it became one of the most important, um, it's a very important exercise for me. It's like going, not that I've ever gone, <laughs> and I'm serious about this, but it's like going to AA. I mean, yeah. you, you've yeah. got to make a commitment, stick yeah. with it. They say it works if you work it. Yeah. <laughs> so you got to, you have to go and, and be committed. And by committing to that writing every week, uh, a lot of my songs are horrible. They're horrible. They're really bad. But but you know what? The the really bad ones. It gets more and more where um, I'm I'm I get better stuff more consistently. Yeah. Um, and my production chops are improving as I go. And I've been strengthened by the people that I you know like working with Pedro and 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 all these guys. Vote, vote for him. Vote for Pedro, please. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And that's that's sharpened me. That's sharpened me too. But. Because I'm writing every week, I know my gear, I know my equipment. I'm not relearning stuff all the time. I'm just, I'm jumping in and, and writing, and I know that I have this deadline, and it's by the end of the day on Saturday, I have to have a song to it. Sometimes it's Saturday night, like after dinner, I'm like, oh crap, I forgot to write my song. So I sit down, and I do a blues jam, and I literally just sing off the, I sing a couple repeated lines, I got, forgot to write my song, dun, 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 you know, and that's my song. And it sounds like you're cheating, but it's it's more about getting something done. This is the sound at <laughs> this his house when he's getting re when he's re realizes he hasn't turned sound in the song. Effect. Yeah. Uh, and, so you, that, yeah. you've covered many of my bullet points yes, under I see your under, bullet points. under the writing of write, submit, forget, and repeat. And it's the most important thing you said is that you're not starting anew each time. Yeah. yeah. Um, while the material may be new, you are constantly, you're adding bricks to a wall yeah. that make you better as a writer and make you better as a producer and all that stuff. And it really irks me when people go, oh yeah, I was a taxi member for like a year and nothing happened for me. Yeah. Uh, why? Well, I only <laughs> submitted a couple of things. Why? Because I only write a couple of things a year. Well, how the hell can you ever and be in the music? It was from my record that I released in two thousand one. Right. So how can and you be in the music? And, to it? <laughs> how can you be in the music industry if that's the way you're going to treat it? Yeah. That that's not even a hobbyist at that point. Right. But no. anyway, so okay, write, submit, forget, and repeat. Um, let's see if I left anything. Oh, out. well. So how long for each session? I mean, yeah. some of my songwriting. Now sessions, he's reading my damn bullet. Oh, points. I'm sorry. That's great. <laughs> you have such a great layout. Um, some some of the. Uh, <laughs> There it is. <laughs> there it is. I do my homework. Uh, which I some songwriting do. sessions will last for 10... It'll be literally the amount of time it takes for me to sing and play, bounce the track, and upload. Okay. And it will be like 15 minutes. Uh, uh, total time. in uh, Total time. Now, I spend more time that each week than 15 minutes. M most weeks writing music. Like, I'll, I'll stay up and record for several hours. Um, weekends, I spend a lot more time... Um, uh, you know, instead of watching TV many nights, I go out and... I notice you're playing with your wedding ring yeah. while you're talking about no. that. Is there anything that, I should... No, no, no. My wife is very supportive of my music. Mrs. Giles, are you watching? I'm not taking it off. I'm not, like, hiding it or anything. Um, <laughs> Stephen, uh, Stephen and I have something we'd like to tell you, Mrs. Giles. Confess it right here, right now. No, so, uh, so the time spent... Um, it, it depends. It just depends. If I find a song that I'm really like, oh, I like this song, then I, I'm a lot more hours go into that. In fact, if you go to the newcoolnow.com and my webpage, I have a link. Someone was passing around a, a meme of a coffee mug with the names of all the mixes 
Oh. <laughs> that they were doing. I think I don't know if you showed that or not, but so I put on my website a list of like one of my songs that had like a, just all these files within you know it's, with a million a, different names of that. People submit those file names. Oh, I know. I, uh. I, I try to rename my file before I turn that in. I mean, literally, um, you know, like Bob song Sunday afternoon mixed <laughs> to yeah. uh, no vocal. Not I, so, not super great professional there. Uh. No, I mean, you know, people in the industry look at that and go, okay. They immediately know that you're a rookie, which we're going to get to in a bit. Um, do you collaborate uh, or co-write very often? What percentage of your oh, work is so I collaborate a lot. Uh, I think sometimes because I know I can get something done by myself quickly, uh, yeah. especially if I'm on a like I've got like one day to like turn it in for 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 the GIS thing, not not for a listing, not for a publisher or anything. Um, like I'll do it by myself. Um, and in fact, I do a lot of collaborating. So I was mentioning Amanda, Amanda West. Hi, Amanda. Um, she just wrote me lyrics, which I only just looked at like like right before I left because I thought I should at least look at them. But I wrote a song, and one of the songs I'll play you, I'm just going to expose myself here as like an unfinished work. <laughs> I was going to wear like multiple T-shirts, by the way, and then like strip the shirts off, but I was afraid that I would expose myself too much, and it wasn't... It's like the whitest white person ever. I'm seriously, I mean, there it is. Uh, here. Look at that. I could be a farmer. I've got the sweet farmers. I'm not L.A. at all. I could have walked in here with a fanny pack to show you how uncool I am. Um, but I left the fanny pack in the car. So, uh, did that answer the question? I work with a lot of collaborators. I collaborate a lot. And I apologize to, like, the three of you that I owe lyrics or guitar tracks or structure to right now let's just get that out of the way i apologize i know i know i owe some of you some stuff so but i i do i collaborate very frequently and in fact my collaborations in general are my songs that are the ones that are the most uh most used that i've seen okay. um like the ones that i've got into some really good libraries yeah they were collaborations how many songs do you have signed at this point or, or instrumentals as well. Uh, Just ballpark -ish. Well, okay, so in ASCAP right now, I have um, the number of songs in there is uh, uh, 200, something like that. Okay. 250. I have 250. Okay. 197 cue sheets, 194 episodes, 64 different series, and three non-series. All right. So and there's my... How much of this happened before you joined Taxi? 10. Okay. Probably 10 or 20, which was two albums. For one uh, of the bands I was in, and and got we got a little taste of publishing. Right. We had a song on Keeping Up with the Kardashians, which gave us a little. It was nice, and something on an MTV, uh, uh, the the thing where they live in the house or whatever. Uh, uh, reality. Re was, real world. Yeah, real world. We had something right. in real world, and I thought, oh, that's cool. You can make money yeah. for your song playing on a TV show. What? <laughs> so like that, and I was I was Who married knew? with kids. I wasn't going to be going out touring. I really, I've been out touring, and when I say out touring, I went out for two weeks. And I called them, it a two weeks, 2,000 miles tour with my band Push Start Wagon. We literally played like five shows, went to Texas, where we stood before a Texas judge because one of the band members peed on the side of the road. By the way, don't mess with Texas people. Wow. Don't mess. <laughs> we were in front of a judge within an hour. That's how bad. That was how, we we're from California, a bunch of hippie musicians. And you're peeing on our road. Don't do it. Just just don't. Okay. Anyway, we went there. Went <laughs> to Chicago. You. And then we came back. I literally, we did five shows. And that was my touring experience. And it turned out I was not... I probably am not going to be a full-time touring musician. And it, tell I liked them, it. I enjoyed it. Tell them what your day job is. My day job, I'm a teacher. And what do you teach? I teach middle school computers and video editing. Okay. Well, so it's fun. That's fun. Yeah. yeah, it's a fun... I feel like I'm cheating. Why aren't you a YouTube star? I, I am. I am a YouTube star. I'm huge. <laughs> I have like a couple hundred subscribers. You, you've got the chops. I'm, I could make a living not from All right. That. So let's move on to submit. Submit. Music that never gets heard or never leaves your hard drive has zero chance, zero chance of getting on a record or used in a film or TV placement. Yet people love to hang out on the internet and grouse about the industry doesn't like me, yeah, or the like industry's me. so hard, they're so <laughs> against us independent musicians. But you, you talk to these people, it's like, well, what have you done with your music? Well, I don't really finish a lot of it. Um, and if they're not finishing it, they can't submit it. So I've got some ideas why people don't submit their music 
Mm -hmm. Want to tell me what yours are? Well, okay, so uh, some not just to taxi, but submitting, getting it to anybody, anything, yeah. uploading it to iTunes or CD Baby or whatever, or putting um, it on SoundCloud or sending it to a publisher, whatever. Yeah, I think some people are too perfectionistic, and so that they 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 have to make everything so perfect that they are paralyzed. Mm -hmm. Perfection paralysis. There you go, Dean Crepain. There's your uh, there's a chapter title. <laughs> <laughs> for the book, <laughs> if you're in there, I'm just I thought I think I saw that Dean was in there. Um, perfection paralysis, it, and that is the uh, that I have to get it just the exact right tone, and I have to tweak this lyric for the 700th time. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't do that, and I'm not saying that I don't do that on some songs, mm -hmm. but I have let go of a lot of that, and just and and I think FOM is what helped me do this uh, first was like just write music that you love. And now I write music that I love and I write stuff for listings. I get inspired by taxi listings. I get inspired by the different publishers that are sending stuff out saying, hey, we need something like this. And I usually only will write something if I've won, if it's in my wheelhouse, mm -hmm. you know, like a you've got singer, a, songwriter, rock. Yeah, you've got a few. I've got a couple, good. yeah. I have a couple things that I'm pretty good at. And then... Um, two, if there's at least one of those songs that to me is exciting to me in some way, like, oh, that's cool, I want to try something like that. So, so I, I do write for inspiration, and I'm I, like, I'm in a position where I'm not living full time off of my my royalties or anything like that. But um, I'm making more money than I ever made in my royalties since joining Taxi. Does it keep going up? It keeps going up. Yeah, I had a really good my July one just came out today. Ooh, if you haven't checked your Casey Hurwitz is like my barometer for if yeah. <laughs> he's like he checks all the time. He's like, hey, blah, blah, blah. so I see that people posting <laughs> that you know this came in, and I'm like, oh, I gotta go check. And I had a really good uh, July, and um, I had a song on Blue Bloods, um, which I posted. It's called uh, Vicious Kisses, and this is a song I wrote for Taxi mm -hmm. for a listing for a band called Magic Wands. Oh, this was years ago. That's right. Yeah, yeah, it was years ago. And this we is played the it last time Stephen was here. Yeah. Yeah, and, it, and it's been used several times. It's one of those ones that publishers really think it's a really cool song, and it had been sitting in a library for four years, and it just got it just got used. Do you know, <laughs> speaking of sitting in a library for four years, and that doesn't mean the kind of library where you're looking at books. That means a production music, music library. library. Right, yeah. right, music library. So the other day, we had a refund request from a guy. Mm -hmm. Um and he wanted his money back. We said, okay, not a problem. Um, and then he, oh, he wanted his submission money back. And we said, that's not part of the deal. The membership fee is, is you know, you get a refund for that. Um, and why do you want a refund? He goes, well, I've had eight things forwarded and I haven't signed any deals yet. Ah. <laughs> and, and I ah. just... And the guy goes, you know, I've had a lot of stuff placed. And I said, okay, well, then you're a professional, so you should know that eight forwards inside of like a 30-day, maybe 60-day window, getting forwarded to somebody doesn't mean that you're, go you know, right. half the stuff, he, the guy was good enough that he was forwarded for a lot of direct-to-supervisor stuff. So he was clearly good. But So that means that four out of the eight went to supervisors. Well, is there like a 100% guarantee that a, a supervisor hears your music, that he or she is going to say, that's what I'm putting in my show? Nope. You would think that this dude would know that. Right. But he didn't. And so unrealistic unrealistic expectations, yes. I think, are really, that kills people too. Like you, you have to go into it knowing this is a marathon. Are you doing music because you love it? You know, and if you love it, you're going to do it. And and then the part of the process of the business side of things, which is what really Taxi has has opened up just a whole realm of things that I just didn't even know or understand. You know, like to the point now where I sign contracts all the time. Like I'm signing contracts all the time. I, I remember the first time with my band signing a contract, we were scared. We were like, oh my gosh, and we were freaking out. And, and that's now, on my list. I, <laughs> that's I don't one freak, of my bullet points. That's what, I didn't see that one, so okay. I, I've sensed that. But um, And now I sign contracts and I understand what I'm doing and I have resources to check out and understand it. And of course, we always recommend that you talk with a music lawyer, but um, you know, I have lots of the right music lawyer because the many right. of them don't know the production music library world. Right. And they go, oh my God, they want a hundred percent of the publisher share. Right. Oh my God. <laughs> it's like, well, yeah, if you're writing hit songs in Nashville, that may may not be the case. But 
Um, so like, I think those expectations that people have, um, it, look, if you go in with that expectation, you are always going to be disappointed. It, uh, I've had so many forwards, and I've had, you know, like I probably have a, I'm probably batting 500. So that's pretty good. Uh, you know, and in the in the beginning, I was trying to force. It was like forcing the square peg into the round hole. Like I was taking my band's first album, and I'm like, oh, this is such a good album. <laughs> it's so good. And it was. It was really good, but it wasn't really timely. It was good when I released it in 2005. And then uh-huh. in 2012, when I'm trying to like get these songs signed, it wasn't really getting any traction. And I was kind remember, of frustrated. Do you remember the aha moment where you went, okay, I need to retool the way I'm approaching this whole thing? Yeah, yeah, I think... Well, I think going to the rally in 2012, I think that was my first rally, and it was right before I met Pedro. In fact, I didn't know Pedro when I went to the rally, and I met him in the forum, uh, I think shortly after. Okay. And I went and, and, and I went with my friend, and they were talking about writing to the listing. And I'm like, what does that mean? Oh, that means you listen to the song. And you can, and like, but I honestly, at that time, I didn't really have the capability... Uh, to do something that I felt was well, and a lot of people wait, do this. I, I just I don't think I had the technology at the time. Like I didn't have a studio, I didn't have access to things. I had always worked with four tracks, yeah. and I had four tracks and eight tracks, and then a sixteen track, and then I finally committed to Pro Tools, and then I spent several years, starting in two thousand and eight, learning Pro Tools, um, and getting to the point where I felt like, oh, I can record tracks, and they sound pretty okay. And then I started looking for what can I do with this, and that's when I went, went back to Taxi. Okay. And uh, I'm sorry, I forget the question. Um, I forget what the question was, too. Oh, uh, we were talking about the, the reasons that people don't submit. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, one of them, the, and we Perfection. T- yeah, you talked about perfection. Um, you somehow introduced lawyers, and now you sign contracts routinely. People fear their music getting stolen. Oh, yeah. And we get that question surpri- uh, more often than I would expect in this day and age. I've got to say, I've been in the industry, believe it or not. For forty years, I've been in the industry since you were. But five. you're only forty. How's that possible? It's I'm a, I'm a profane, <laughs> or profane liar. But no, I I am right. almost sixty three years old. I've been in the industry for over forty years. I started in the industry when I was nineteen years old and have never been out of it. <laughs> Help me! <laughs> you're a lifer. <laughs> oh God, it's sad. Nineteen anyway, life. Uh, <laughs> But so many people think, well, if I put my music out there, it could get stolen. And I've got news for you. Most people aren't thieves, and most music isn't worth stealing. (laughs) Right? Right, right. Uh, Especially little instrumental cues, Uh, which is probably the easier way to start and and get the cash flow and get inspired. Are people stealing your music? Sure, they probably are. There are probably people out there that are downloading your song and then... Sticking it somewhere else, and and here's my oh, no, thought no, they're, to that. T- they're talking about stealing. Oh, like music taking and, it and then claiming it's theirs, or right? Yeah, like yeah. stealing your most brilliant idea. To which I say, uh, if you're writing Beyonce's next hit, you may not want to put that out there on G right. G Waz or however right, you say. right, right. Um, you don't want to expose that to a broad swath of other songs. But I doubt but, any producer that's going to be able to get it to Beyonce to give it to her is looking in the G Waz. Right, pool. exactly, a- and. Uh, <laughs> Nor do they want to ruin their career over stealing a song from somebody. Right, right. They, they, because it would it would come out. You would know. That, I think that it's a fear of people who are more on the amateur side of things in general. Well, that's what we're talking and about today. It, right, submit, forget. This is what makes you professional. This is what makes you a pro. It really, I, this is, I'll tell you, going to Taxi was the first time I felt like I could call myself a professional musician. The road rally. That I am, right. Okay. It, that I, and it was within one or two of those years in the beginning where I started saying, I'm a professional musician, I write music for film and television, I'm an artist, whatever. Like, I'm where I could gonna say your, I'm going to read the email or the, the oh. forum post because oh. that, that relates to number five, which we'll oh, get good. to. Okay. I don't even remember it. what I wrote. So that'll be good. You wrote that. That'll be good. So, um, uh, yeah. Go ahead. Finish um, that thought. I forgot where that thought was. Um, you uh, talked about you finally started to feel like a professional. Oh, yeah. I started feeling like a professional. So uh, I, I post things on SoundCloud every single week. I don't mail myself a cassette copy and copyright it. I it's it, technically it's copywritten the second you put it in any form, you know. Uh, I'm not a lawyer, so but I don't worry about that. I don't worry about that at all. Um, I, I feel that I'm going to keep writing better songs all the time, and if someone takes my song, 
and they pitch it to someone awesome, I can sue them and right. I'll make a I've, lot of money. It'll be great. You better I look forward to that happening. I've been saying this. Steal since my music. This is the day I started Taxi. <laughs> You should only please, hope that Madonna, back music. then I would say, I hope that Madonna steals your song. Um, because or Taylor if, Swift. If you registered the copyright, you'll be in good shape. <laughs> T-Swift, steal my music. Um, some people think that submitting music that's been requested is uncool. And you talked mm. about this, uh, that you tried to fit your square peg of an album from a few years back into some round holes a few years forward. Yeah. Uh, and people look down their nose like, ooh, I don't write to order. Well, you know what? If they could, they would. Right. They just haven't practiced enough right. and done and it routinely enough that they're comfortable doing it. So therefore, they talk badly about it yeah. like it's some lower form of life. Yeah. I think it's a higher form of the craft, personally. Well, I, so I had a, a long, for, like a, not the forum, but on Facebook with someone who was kind of like, hey, is Taxi legit? Should I do Taxi? And and I just, and I, like, I, I kind of am a defender of those organizations, like, when I believe in Thank something. You. So I, I jumped in and said, hey, and I made a video. I actually oh, made wow. a YouTube video. And, I, you know, I, I said, because I felt like I, there's no way I was going to be able to type all of my thoughts on that. Right. And I, I posted a video that said, it's a, is Taxi legit? Or why, why Taxi or why Taxi and FOM? And just because I feel like a lot of people ask that question. And I said, first... I, it's absolutely legit. And second, um, and people were saying, you know, I put some stuff in there and it didn't go anywhere. And and, <laughs> it, and, and it was all the things that we talk about. Right. And I, and I just said... I wrote a novel <laughs> and it didn't sell. And it didn't sell. And it's like, you know, like if you're a local artist and you release a CD and you don't ever play and you don't promote it, no one's going to hear it. I mean, it's like if you clap in the forest and no one's there to hear it. Does anyone? I I don't know. Maybe you weren't clapping. Uh, <laughs> I I am. Uh, so I just tell them, look, part of this is it's a, it's a professional organization. It's about you know, it's like trying to earn money with your music. Mm -hmm. There's also artistry, and you can be an artist and be. I mean, true artists have to also man, maintain a business. You, you don't think Madonna is an amazing businesswoman? I know Absolutely. she is. Yeah. And, and I know there's a few artists that are such pure artists that they literally, like, someone handles all the other things for them. Bob Dylan. Right. <laughs> okay, maybe maybe Bob Dylan, maybe a few other people. Because if, if Bob tried to negotiate a contract, it'd sound like, man, man, man. <laughs> Nobody knows what the hell he's talking about. Right. It, but most people, uh, they deal with, the, like, trying to understand, like, how their that world works. And, and part of becoming a professional and, and taking your craft seriously is... Is understanding some of those things. So I don't. It is not a compromise to look at a listing. Tell me an artist that wasn't inspired by another artist. Right. I don't know. There is no one that lives in such a vacuum. That makes me crazy when people say, "How can you?" <laughs> My <laughs> soul. All, all of you. All of the musicians that you love were inspired by some other musician. That's they right. grew up hearing music that filled their head, and they're like, "Oh my gosh!" Now some of them purposely chose to like veer off of that. So that, but even the fact that they veered off of it meant that there was somewhere where they started so they could go to a different direction. So there was a place where there were these chords and a beat yeah. that then inspired them to take it and go this way where they did the opposite and did a beats with a chord or whatever or created the beats with the, the only the chords and not using a drum. Or, or synthesized five different bands that they loved. Whether they, you know, they probably don't yeah, even realize like, they're right, doing it. Subconsciously it. happening. Yeah, it's like right. a, if you love this, if you love Motown and you love Philly Soul and you love Chicago Blues your music is bound to be influenced by those to some degree. Oh, someone's mentioning a book that I every time I see it, I think it's the best book, War of Art. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, such a good book. I do, love that book. Do you book. know how Is that Pressfield? Pressfield? Yeah, Stephen Pressfield. Oh, yeah, he has another book that's super good, too. Uh, all of his books are great. Do you know, uh, last year I was this close to having Pressfield at the Road Rally. I love that. He actually said, well, he actually said yes, and then he said no. Oh. He doesn't like doing live gigs. Oh. He does not. I mean, we had some That's back and tough, forth. Man. and We have a mutual friend, the rabbi that married my wife and I, is every one of his books you'll see. Thank you, Rabbi Mordecai Finley. So oh. we ran into Finley at an event and said, hook me up with Pressfield. And he did. Oh. And Pressfield That'd be so was, awesome. He was a very nice man. We had some nice back and forth. I see Pressfield. I got I mean, Mr. Pressfield, <laughs> if you're watching. I'm oh, we would, I would so love to hear you speak. Um, 
D- the Dan Wilson from yeah. Semi Sonic. Yeah. I would love to see that guy. Is he's written with so many different people. His own stuff, successful band career, yeah. his solo career. He's amazing. Too. I was just uh, looking at something he wrote this morning. This is really great too. It's Stephen King's on writing, and it's about writing a novel. But I read it every every few years. I reread it because it's so good. It's just about the creative process, and it's about doing the work. Submitting. Yeah. He gets down every day and writes something, even if it's garbage. <laughs> I many, love it. Many, many it's... years ago, my <laughs> two daughters, who are now older, they're like 36 and 33, and I did a road trip up to San Francisco Bay Area. And we went into a little hole in the wall restaurant somewhere, and it was just the three of us and Stephen King sitting at a table <laughs> by himself. And what was Stephen King doing? Sitting there jotting notes. He's down. either reading or he's writing. Yeah. And he builds time. And so this is a lesson from Stephen King. Every day he is writing. I, I, maybe he takes off a day on the weekend or something. Like he, he does it like a job. He yeah. does it like a job, but not a job that he hates. He just he's disciplined. Um, and then he reads. He says, "Look, if you're a writer and you're not reading, what are you doing? If you're a musician and you're not listening to music, let me challenge you. You need to listen to music. You need to listen to listen to some of the new music. Like yes. I know people say all this music, it's just noise and." <laughs> Uh, and honestly, uh, but yet they want to be in the same industry. All those noisy people are in. Right, and and I'm not saying you have to be like uh, what a uh, you know EDM artist, whoever the new EDM. If you're like a folk guitar player, and and the the cool thing right now is is EDM and glitch hop and trap hip pop and whatever, and you just don't do that style. I'm not saying abandon your roots and throw away you know like that that style that you are in but maybe and I guess this comes around if you're in taxi trying to do that you you may find yourself frustrated if you're not listening to newer things and trying to incorporate some of those elements and we do run listings where people are looking for old absolutely stuff, but they're right. not as frequent right um, right you know what I would say is if you're that acoustic guitar player I would just go get myself an EDM beat and just let that run on an endless loop in your laptop and just sit there and just write And play it. over top yeah. of that. Oh, Absolutely, yeah. because sooner or later you're going to hit something and go, wow, yeah. that worked, and I'm now doing something that's outside of my comfort zone. There's this little-known artist named Beck, Yeah, and he did a few things <laughs> yeah. where he mixed up folk and hip-hop and yep. noise, and I don't know, something happened It's with funny, him. at the time when he got signed, I didn't get him at all. Now it was I, weird. I go back <laughs> and listen to it and think that guy was brilliant. Oh, he's yeah, so when he put something out, you should check it out. Okay, so now we're moving on. We've right, done submit. Uh, forget. 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 So... This is the really tricky part. Really, really, really tricky part for people. This is what sends them to mental hospitals, <laughs> is they've made the submission. They got right. brave enough, and I give them a lot of credit for that. They get brave enough to make the submission. They've sent their music off to Taxi, and we forwarded it to a music supervisor or a production music library or a record label. And then they sit there staring at the telephone or their laptop checking every 10 minutes to see did they hear it yet did they like it <laughs> yeah so how did you learn i mean this is i think possibly the most important thing what we're talking about today is the forget part because this is what holds you back after you've gotten over that the first two hurdles of writing all the time so you yeah. get better the submission hurdle and now you can kill the whole thing because you dwell on yeah am i good enough or they can yeah. take it what did you do to get past that um I just, uh, and I did, like, so when I first started submitting things, um, it was like every day, check it, look at the, you know, feedback. Right. And, and I think that feedback is good. Um, I don't worry about that as much anymore. I really do, like, uh, like, I work with a lot of different libraries, and I work with some people directly. I got a chance this very recently to work directly with a show, um, with the guy that does all the music for the show, and every once in a while he reaches out to me and says, "Hey, can you do a piece?" And I got a chance to do that, um, and and it's just like I wrote it, sent it to him, and then forgot about it. And then he came back, said, "Hey, can you make some changes?" Yep, I can make changes. And Taxi definitely prepared me for that. Like working oh. with people at Taxi, like I would have never been ever been able to do that, or have been in the position to do that, right? Without Taxi. 
um, and, I, and by working way, with Pedro. And, we, we didn't <laughs> discuss any of this before you came. As a matter no, of fact, no. I had sent Stephen an email about a month ago. I said, hey, are you off this summer? I didn't Do you want to ever be? get the email. Uh, and I, I sent an email. Filter or something. I don't know. Right. Um, there was a, a, Maybe a, you send it to Stephen with a PH. No, because it's, <laughs> oh, it was like it's SLs. SLs. Yeah. Okay, all right. But I did have a problematic week with AOL. Um, uh, it I might probably, be one of the black I, I probably, hole yeah, emails. I used the AOL email. You're still probably. using AOL, though. Um, just for <laughs> certain, certain types of emails. The well, ones with good. people that I don't you want them don't to get. don't want it, it to get. Yeah, it's I like your personal. I send them to AOL. No. So that's why I feel did. special. <laughs> anyway, um, where was I? Uh, so forgetting. And yeah, but what were we talking about? Something specific. Why did I mention? Oh, that he wasn't prepped to say any of this oh, stuff yeah, about yeah. taxi because not until yesterday afternoon, uh, <laughs> we were having a belated Father's Day barbecue yesterday, and I went upstairs to check my email, and I saw this email from from Stephen going, "So do you want me on the show or not?" And I went, "Dude, yeah, I sent you an email." <laughs> oh. <laughs> I saw all I know is I was on Facebook, and someone said, "Hey, are you doing the taxi TV?" And I'm like. Uh, I didn't know about it, but I sort of knew. Look, it wasn't completely a surprise because I remember I was in yeah. the chat room. We actually you said, hey, you should come out. I'm like, we yeah. Picked a date. I don't think I heard the date, though. I think, uh, I think I left the room, and you may have said something. You left the room I have children. I, I have children. I have some children, and sometimes they do crazy stuff and throw things and start stabbing each other. And then I have to go intervene. My children don't stab each other that I know of. Um... But, uh, yeah, so I totally missed the part where you yeah. said, okay, I'll see you on uh, I actually, whatever I the wrote, date is. I still Oops. use a paper calendar, and I actually wrote it oh, in that's right good. then that's and there good. during the show. Anyway, so he literally didn't know he was on the show until probably <laughs> dinner time last night or thereabouts. Yeah. And then uh, I just wrote to him and said, just show up and trust me. And didn't tell him anything. And because, I do trust you. That's why I came. Because I wasn't worried. <laughs> well, I knew we were doing this, and for you to go to the trouble of making the stickers and now having the shirts, and the shirts. which you can get on Amazon, and you can find it at writesubmitforgetrepeat.com, and it's also on the link that I gave you earlier, newcoolnow.com. Click on my face, and they donate a hundred percent of the proceeds to homeless musicians, <laughs> which would be us. <laughs> no, no not homeless musicians. Sorry, um, no. Proceeds. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> Um, Maybe some. We might donate some. I don't know. We haven't. We're not making enough money to actually <laughs> donate anything yet. So uh, anyway, but after tonight, woo! Thousands of these will be sold. So anyway, I, I knew that we were going to be on topics that you would know well because you are a protagonist yeah. of the right submit forget uh, yeah. repeat meme. So now we're still on forget for a minute. Um, any suggestions on what people can do? To break free of that counterproductive obsession with checking constantly to see, did I get a forward? Did this library reach out to me? Is the oh, music right. super? How do you not do that? Because I do it with, I got to admit, uh, I, I go on vacation with my laptop and my family will be on a ski mount and I'll be in the hotel room writing up or editing a listing and I'll check to see where the income is at for the day. So right. I, I mean, get it. some of it. It's just, some of that's natural. Um, for me, it was seeing other experienced taxi members say, "This is what you do," and, and there are people it. I looked up to, like Maz and Dean and Barry and all these other guys who I knew to be people with integrity, people who wrote good music, and people who were finding success. And they all have the same things in common. Isn't it amazing? Yeah. It's like well, a laundry right. list of commonality. The right. music could be diverse. Right. Oh, the music's totally very different. You yeah. know, and a and, uh, uh, group of those guys and girls, just everybody, who was doing something, con and they were consistently writing. They were saying, and it was like John, in the, in the, like Maz was saying in the forums. I mean, I think that's where I really latched onto that, and I, I, I sensed that that was a very important statement. Uh motto you know is that you got to keep you got to keep doing it mm -hmm. and you can't dwell in the past you have to keep writing and you keep sh it's like sharpening yourself you know you're you, you just keep doing it and and it's like a marathon you got to run the race you hit the wall and you got to push through the wall you're always going to hit the wall and then you can get through it and so like hearing these guys say that over and over again really helped me go, okay, I'm, I've hit this wall. I feel like I'm checking these things and nothing's happening. 
I just saw, holy cow, Matt Hurt got a song in the new Spider-Man movie. Wow. Yeah. And he wrote it in like 2003. He wrote it in 2003, everybody. Yeah, and he was all, gone. And who knows? For all the people that give up after six months. Yeah. That's 14 years. Wow. So I don't know if that was just in a library sitting there or if he, like, I don't know what happened. I don't know the full story, but I know that I went and saw the Spider-Man movie. It was really good. So you should definitely go see it. Oh, by the way, stay to the end, very end credits, like very, very end because it's really good. It's funny. So if you like Marvel superhero stuff, you're going to love it. But um, he had his song in there and... And I'm sure that's a decent... I would imagine that's reasonable uh, pay I, to be I in had, that movie. Uh, but I would guess... I would just be stoked. To have, I would be like, dude, the, I was in Assuming movie. it was with a publisher and it was a 50-50 deal, which Matt probably has some deals that aren't 50-50 because he wields some power now because he's yeah. been around forever and been really good at it. But let's go with 50-50 deal and let's say... I don't know, thirty-five hundred to seventy-five hundred, somewhere in that range. Yeah. Call, it, call it a five thousand dollars sync fee that he got to split um, with the publisher, and then the back end is where he's going to make going to make. How does, I honestly don't know how that works. Do you make? Not in a movie theater not, in America, right? But in many other countries around the world, you do oh. get paid for theatrical. But where you make the money, Spider-Man will be on HBO. Oh my gosh. Showtime, ABC, NBC, CBS, Invit for the rest of our adult life right. for the rest of our lives period. oh yeah so that's where he's going to make the most money yeah I'm, I'm I'm I would really that's like a one of my my bucket list thing like yeah. I've hit some of my bucket list thing like wow. just getting stuff on a on a network television show and and that's happened a couple times and and I have some things and some little indie films like getting something in a in a large film that would be like uh be so cool like uh, but this is another thing I would like to share, which is... I'm going to grab a visual aid, but you okay, you go grab visual aid. I'll be right back. <laughs> uh, I want to say that, uh, like, there's a quote that we have on our refrigerator. My wife put it on it. It says, comparison is the thief of joy. And I think that a lot of times we compare ourselves to everyone else and, like, oh, I'm not as good as so-and-so or I'm not as good as so-and-so. And I think I definitely went through a phase with that where I felt like I wasn't as good as anybody else. Um but I've come to be really happy with who I am as a musician and what I do musically, and I'm comfortable with it. And I think that, uh, you know, I think the sooner you can get to that place where you're really comfortable with what you do and who you are, the more um, you're going to be like, uh, you're, you're going to, I think you're going to find more success that way because you're not uh, second guessing yourself. You're not, uh, you're not, um, uh, D- judging yourself against someone else. Now, I, I think there's a, a there's definitely a good. It's definitely good to see here's a bar and like how to get to that bar. But I think comparing yourself always and feeling that you are somehow lesser um, is not good. You're always better than somebody else too. Right, right. <laughs> and, and, and there's always people learning. And but uh, that's that's another thing I really love about both the farm and the taxi community is how supportive they are. I don't. I've never. I have never felt that it's like push everyone else down. Um, so that you can get up higher. I have always felt that it's here's the boat and we're all coming up together and we're all learning and we're helping and grabbing you and here, come on up here and check this out. Oh, look over here. Here's the safety yeah. stuff. You know, like I, I've always felt that way. People have always been so generous with their with their time. I mean, I've made phone calls. to I have good friends that I've made through Taxi who I can call or I can say, hey, can I call you? And who will sit on the phone with me for a half hour, an hour, walking me through some stupid thing in Pro Tools I don't understand how to do. And then they go in the kitchen, put a magnet up in their refrigerator, <laughs> says, I'm so much better than that guy. <laughs> <laughs> and then they know. They know what a hack I am. <laughs> he doesn't even know how I, to. <laughs> I'm astounded. I really am astonished by the, the generosity uh, of the community of taxi members and the fact that not only are they generous with their time, but they, they will divulge things that are going to help you succeed that potentially yeah. could help you kick their butts, but they don't see it as a competition. Mm-hmm. They really see it as we all kind of legitimize the taxi writing community right. and, and elevate our craft together. It's all the right. all the right stuff. If you're forgetting, if you're doing the right submit and forget, um, you're you're not worried about what everything else. Has. You're just doing your thing. You're just doing right. your thing. Stephen King. He's just writing his books. He's just writing, writing, writing. He's not going. Oh, I wonder if this publisher will like it or if they'll make this into a movie. He is not thinking about that most of the time. He's just writing because he's got it. He wants to write. He likes to write. He loves to write. 
and he's doing it. And he's doing it in a professional way, you know? And so I write all the time every week. And some weeks I'm more inspired, but I'm always doing it and then moving on and, and writing something new. So we were talking about um, Spider-Man and uh, um, Stan Lee. Um, oh, uh, well, hey, look at that. So I remember, you know, you guys have heard me talk about the flood in my office a few months ago, so I was cleaning out, and there was a venture capital magazine from the internet bubble, and... I don't know if you can see that, but there is... You're hanging out with Stan Lee. I am directly... That's Michael Lasko and Stan Lee. Yeah, <laughs> that's as close as I will ever get to Stan Lee, but I'm in there with Stan Lee, so I'm very proud of that. Only people who understand how cool Stan Lee is understand how good I felt. That, that was my bucket list. Now, yeah. were you a comic book guy? Were you like a... I, but, you know, yes, but Batman, Superman, and Archie. Oh, and Archie. <laughs> see, well, hey... <laughs> I always liked Betty better than Veronica. Uh, um, okay. Plus one, Betty or Veronica? <laughs> Just go ahead, Betty or Veronica. Is there one that you who is your crush from the Archie? If you know what that is. Sadly, <laughs> my wife and I just watched the entire first season of Riverdale uh, oh, on Netflix, which I haven't is, watched it yet. I've, I've heard mean, the it, kids talking about it. It's for thirteen-year-olds. Oh, right. My wife and I watched the entire first season. That's my guilty pleasure. Um, th that's what we do at our house. That's a grown-up activity at the Lasco residence. <laughs> All right, uh, let's get back to the sticker because we still have repeat. 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 So, how can we ask people to repeat this prob this process when they won't see any benefits initially? It could be three months, six months, a year, even two years. But Fourteen years. <laughs> there you <laughs> yeah, go. For, for the matter there it of is. <laughs> Fourteen but, years. How do people? How can you ask people as a fellow taxi member, uh -huh. or encourage your fellow taxi members to stick with it and keep repeating this process of writing, submitting, forgetting, and repeating, when they're going? Why should I? Nothing is happening. How did you so stay with it? It it because to quote the AA or support <laughs> groups, it, the, one of the things that I've heard said is it works if you work it. Yeah. If, it, if you work the still like they have the 12 steps so if you do the 12 steps and you consistently go to group it works if you don't show up to group and you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing like if you're supposed to check in with your sponsor you know like taxi is your music sponsor people okay this is the support group yeah and 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 if you if you do what your sponsor is telling you to do in an Alcoholics Anonymous group they say you don't go into a bar you you know you don't go places where you used to go where you would get alcohol you, um, if you're feeling like you need to, you call your sponsor. Mm -hmm. You go to more groups. You show up with the people that are trying to stay sober. So if you're doing your music, you need to be around the people that are doing the music. You need to look at the people that are have more years than you. Okay. So like I was looking to my to my guys. Like I was looking to Maz and Dean and Barry and just a bunch of these guys. And I apologize. I know I'm, there's a bunch of you that I looked up. I look up to and still do. Um, but I would see what they were saying and what their advice was in the forums and on Facebook and wherever. And, and then if they were saying, hey, you got to wait five years before you might even see a dent, you got to do the five year program. Then I said, okay, I'm going to go five years and I'm going to see what happens. Let's see if this is working. And this I can is, say, the, I am at five years. This is my five years. The other meme, the five year plan. <laughs> and it's working. I'm making money. I'm making, I can pay for like lots of cool stuff. I pay for all my taxi stuff and I'm still making money and I'm, I'm paying for new gear and I bought new monitors this year and, and I'm, you know, be able to buy some instruments and, um, it's just, that's great. And it's all from royalties. Like I'm not digging out of my family's budget. It's like all handling itself. Um, and I only see it growing more. Um, as the years and go. And you're doing it as a part-timer on a very regular basis. A part-timer on a very regular basis, but I'm a full-time teacher, which is pretty awesome because I'm off there in the summer. Um, I'm a full-time husband. Full husband, father of three, two cats. We just had crazy construction done at our house. Can I, I want to give one other piece of advice. If you're building anything, go ahead and pull all the proper permits. And don't live in your house while the construction is going on. I've made that mistake. Yeah, we did that too. Just pull the permits, people. 
I am a testimony to when you don't do something, then you decide you're just going to build something, <laughs> and then you have to get it done correctly. Sucks. Yeah, I learned a, I've learned a valuable, valuable lesson. But that to say, uh, <laughs> you're, I don't know what that was to say. Write, submit, forget, repeat. Okay, so we're talking about repeating again and encouraging people to stick with it. Um, a lot of people just... Oh, think. yeah, how do you stick with it over a long period of time? Looking at the people in front of you who are saying to do it, and they're saying this works. If you do this, it's gonna, it's eventually going to pay off. It's easier, not, it's easier to convince yourself to not believe them so that you give yourself permission to crap out. Right. And that's sad. Because right. That's why there are only you know 10 or 20% that are successful and right. not 100%. Because many people give themselves right. permission to crap out. Right. And, uh, I mean, I know realistically, look, 100% of the people that join Taxi, if 100% of the people did everything we're saying exactly the same way, it's not, we're not going to have every single person having the exact same results. But I'll tell you what, when you do what the, the advice that is being given and you listen to it week after week and you're tuning into Taxi TV and you're checking the forums and you're connecting with people that you've met at the rally and you're continuing those relationships, you are going to have more success. You are going to see that grow. But it is not an instant, like there's no, like there's a lot of that, that uh, you know, everything is fast food culture. Right. And... And it's not bad if people do things quickly. And anything you want to learn in an instant is on right. that device. Right. I mean, and we can look it up like just like that. But you can't. You have successful. to know yeah. just like anything, just like a good diet or a good exercise regime or anything. Those, if you do those really fast, they don't last. One, mm -hmm. you do that crash diet. If you do the diet for a month or two or whatever, and then you're back to your normal habits, uh, because it was like this. It's like a drug almost. It's like there's this quick high, and then it takes. It's a lot of work to do that again and again and again, and it doesn't have the same result. But that uh, maybe that's don't follow the drug analogy. Uh, but, but that's just an important thing <clears throat> that you just mentioned because did you find that when you started to see results that it motivated you to stick with it? Yeah. yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I feel would... I was motivated. Like when I start seeing my my ASCAP every single year has gone up. Yeah. Uh, now, I know that at some points I'm going to hit, there'll be a point where I, I maybe hit a year where I haven't put as much in, and, and it might go, or I might hit like a peak for myself, and I haven't hit that yet. So um, uh, it's still growing. Um, some you're, years you're I've definitely submitted more. 20 years away from retiring, and think about how many oh, pieces of music you'll have I out there. Know. By the time you retire, this income will have surpassed I'm, your I, teaching income. Dude, I, I, that will, I'm kind of like... I'm not like sitting there going, I need this to retire, but um, I'm really excited about the thought that I'm putting the time in now, and that is going to pay. It's going to be a dividend that it pays, and I don't, um, I don't spend all my time worried about that. Mm -hmm. I don't. I try not to do that with a lot of my life, like worry in general and stressing myself out and being anxious about things. I try to not do that because I cannot control right. any. There's just so many things I cannot control. I cannot control what a music supervisor is going to think about my song, regardless if it's the perfect and perfectly matched the listing. I can't control how that supervisor is going to react to that song. Right. I can't control, uh, you know, how that they respond to. It. I can't control if they pick it and then it gets dumped out of the scene. Right. You know, because they cut it last minute because it, the, the dialogue was being overshadowed by the lyric or, or whatever. Or the supervisor loved it, played it for the EP, and, and the EP they decided went, they didn't yeah, like it. Yeah. You know. So uh, there are a there's lot a lot of things, of things that can go wrong. It's like the serenity prayer, you know. Grant me the wisdom to accept the things I can and the, the wisdom to know the difference. You know, like what are the things that I can change? I can change. I can I can do the things like putting the time in and writing the music because I'm a musician. I can learn more about the business. Go to Taxi, read the forums, watch Taxi TV. Those are the things that I can control. And then if I follow the advice of the guys that I'm I'm watching which is do this process and keep going and keep writing and don't look back and move forward. Then I'm going to see success and a half, and it's worked. And I know some people could say, well, that's you. You play all these instruments. Look, I am a mediocre guitarist. <laughs> I'm a mediocre, I'm a sub-mediocre drummer, but I can sound like a good punk 
garage drummer. I, he actually played me something before, yeah. and I said, "Not what? too bad, right?" And right, and like, I said, "What, what, I what got, software are you using?" I really, truly, yeah, <laughs> it's it was, the Giles plugin. Yeah, uh, and um, uh, like I'm not, uh, but I'm okay. And in fact, I met this other guy. This is the guy that I, I wrote for recently, um, and he like f- he fully is like like writing for several Netflix shows. The, he is the main music guy. He's just the, he's the composer, and. And he's said the same thing to me. He says, look, I'm not, like, an astounding guitar player. I'm not, like, this amazing keyboard player. He's really learned how to use his plugins. Like, he creates really orchestral, cool stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but he said, you know, I just, I can hear how it all kind of goes together, and I've learned how to, like, create, like, a soundscape, you know? And he says, I've just done it. I just kept doing it. And he hustles. He hustles a lot. It's not he about... He does that full time. It's not about... <laughs> More often than not, it's not about being a compositional genius. The genius is in understanding the market or the need, the person on the receiving end. Yeah. Like, what do they really need yeah. versus what can I do? Which is what Taxi helps you do because you're seeing what here's what the industry needs. Here's what they're really into right now. Here's the here's the music. So if, if you want to do that side of things, look, if you're trying to be an artist and you want to be a folk artist, um, there's some great folk. I mean, you got... Like uh, I, f- I feel like Jason Isbell or um, uh, and I don't know all the, the current folk artists because I haven't actually been focusing on that style of music. But listen to some of the new stuff that's coming out in that style, and then start trying to emulate some of it. You know, that's which I mean, that's your, in my opinion, from the music of yours that I've heard, that's your natural habitat that probably comes easiest to you. Yeah, indie that's folk what, and yeah, that's indie what you, rock stuff. you sound like that. Yeah, it, it just. You can tell that stuff comes out of you pretty effortlessly, but only because you listen to a lot of it and mm-hmm. were able to absorb it. And now, so we've done. Oh, yeah, there's write, a fifth step that write, I don't even know about. Write, submit, forget, oh, repeat. Nice. The four. Oh, and nice. now the fifth one. Drum roll. The fifth thing that make people oh, professional is doing? that they act like professionals. Oh, they act like professionals. And this Taxi Forum post made by Stephen on June 14th of this year, like less than a month ago, reads, Hey, taxi peeps, I'm a failure at posting regularly in the forums, but I want to share a story that I believe I could never have shared five years ago heading into my first taxi road rally. I'm inserting a word here or there. Uh, yesterday morning, a client sent me an email asking if I could compose and upload a cue for him no later than Thursday night. By the way, this never would have happened five years ago because I had close to zero industry contacts. Now comes taxi's training, the taxi training, insight, and education. I went through several steps in my mind, and I love this part. Do I have the time to devote to this project and finish it on time, in time? Do I even understand what the client is asking me for? Number three, do I have the particular skill set this client needs to achieve whatever he... This client needs to... Yeah, yeah did, did my sentence make sense? No. <laughs> and what do you do for a living? I teach school, I'm but a not teacher. English. <laughs> not English. <laughs> anyway, what he's trying to say is, do I have the skill set to give the dude what he's asking for, right? Yeah. Okay. First, I wouldn't even be in the situation unless I'd been a taxi member for months slash years. Second, the answers to all these questions was a resounding yes because I'd been a member of Taxi and understand what he's asking for. And that's really important. I'm glad to say that I finished, uploaded the queue, and responded and created stems for my client all within a day. Stems are breakout mixes, basically, little submixes. I've also learned a lot about being a professional from Taxi, how and what to ask the client, what to do and what not to do. And most importantly, I had the confidence to say yes. Confidence means so much. And then complete what I said I would earlier than expected and meeting or exceeding expectations. Thanks, Taxi. This community has done so many amazing, far-reaching things for me and my career. I still feel like a newbie many times, but I also feel quite confident telling people that I'm a professional in all caps and I write music for film and television and I really believe it. Thanks, Taxi, he says again. P.S. This is one of those paying gigs that even if the music doesn't get used, I'll still get paid. Meaning the library bought out yeah. the copyright, you kept the, the writer's share. Yeah. So, it was like kind of a work for hire, but I also get my name on it. So And you get a few hundred bucks out yeah. of the front end. Yeah. So even if it, it was, never gets it used, really cool. your time was paid for. And if it does get used, you're still going to make money. And let me say as a professional, I have also made a mistake this year 
where I <laughs> submitted something yeah. to one of my one of my uh, respected music libraries where I did something where I had like sent a mix, and then for whatever reason, I didn't save it properly so that I could get back to the mix that uh, the publisher liked. Oh no! <laughs> and I looked. Like a total ass. I mean, was it somebody I, that knew you well enough to know that it was an honest mistake and I, not that you were? Yeah, I think so. I think so. But well, and this person told me <laughs> they, they told me that that wasn't very professional, and 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 I wow. I was cowed a little, and it was good just just to say like I haven't made it. I'm still I am still learning, um, and I and I. It, it just made me think. Okay, in the future, I'm really gonna make sure that like. This, if I turn this in or I submit this to this person that I know, what it, what was it that I submitted? Because if you look on my webpage, I have a list of my files, and you can see all my files, like how my oh, files right, are named. Right, right, yeah. And like I think I had submitted this version, and then when I sent it back, he was noticing that it didn't sound like the mastered version didn't sound right. Oh. I finally figured out it was a plugin that I was testing, and it, it turned it, it deactivated itself every time you open the session. Oh. And it was a really cool plugin. It was really it was cool. Really that uh, noticeable. It's wow. called Vintage Warm. Here's a little plug-in for those of you plug-in freaks. It's called Vintage Warmer, and it emulates like a like a tape warming technique. A lot of people use like sausage fattener. There's some mm-hmm. other ones out there, but it really impacted the mix, like to the point where he's like, "What happened to the song? Like this doesn't sound right. Like something is wrong." And and I wasn't totally hearing it at first. It was because I was just sending the file and I didn't really hear it. And so it, it's funny because I. I like you learn from these mistakes it it really helped me go oh man before i send another thing like this to to somebody right. i am going to be a thousand percent checking these things before i send them so but then and that was this year or now nah, i think that was this year so that happened this year and then this happened this thing the story this was like like a couple weeks ago um where this whole thing went down and actually finally finished because it came back to me by the way andy gabris um he saved my butt. He's like a guy, because I, I didn't want to look like a total moron yeah. with my clients. So I'm like, uh, Andy, how do you do this? And and he helped me. See, Andy's got stickers that say butt saver. <laughs> He's a butt saver <laughs> sticker. He <laughs> saved my butt, man. And But that's because I met guys. I knew who they are. I knew what's get, like. I know he's a Pro Tools guy, and Ethan is a Pro Tools guy, and Seth Littlefield is a Pro Tools guy. Those are guys that I, you know, I'm doing stuff with, and so I can reach out to them, um, and that's because I have that group of people, and this is because they want to be professionals, and they are working on it, and we are all. So I feel like I have like a group that's my class of 2012 or mm-hmm. something. It was like Seth, oh, that's Ethan. A, that's a really good way to, to frame that because it does yeah. happen. You, you have people that kind of graduate taxi yeah. high, yeah. And, and they're like taxi members emeritus. They still belong <laughs> to taxi. They still come to the road rally. They don't really need us, but they want to remain part of the community, and they still pass their knowledge on. Yeah. And then you get the people who are two or three years behind them, and there's always this generational thing. And yeah. that's what's so cool about the rally is all the generations come together. And even though they're little pockets, like there's the 2012 dudes over there, <laughs> and there's the 2004 dudes over there, they do come together. And yeah. there's, I used to always be appreciative at Criteria Studios, where I started my career in Miami, Florida. There were four studios under one roof. And the day I started, the Bee Gees were doing Jive Talk, and the Eagles were mixing the One of These Nights record. Clapton was mixing I Shot the Sheriff, that whole album. Um, and Stephen Stills was doing Love the One You're With, all under the same roof. As I grew up there and, and got to the point where you know I, I was in sessions and, and not just sweeping floors, I loved the fact that you could be sitting in a room and one of your fellow engineers would come in and go, how did you get the bass sound? I can hear it through the wall. It sounds freaking amazing. Or I could walk in a room and say, how did you get that kick sound? So there was this constant exchange of information. And once you were part of the group, it didn't matter if you were a senior or a freshman. Mm-hmm. Everybody mm-hmm. share, and that's yeah. what goes on at the Road Road. Yeah. I love that. And and it's like, you can walk up to anybody. Like, my first my first year, I think I walked up to Dean, and I didn't know who he was. You know, I think I'd seen him, and, and I was like, hey, you know, uh, hi. <laughs> like, I saw people hand, shaking hands and he, introducing he's themselves. He's so hard to get to know. <laughs> he's, no. so, he's so cold and aloof. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, he he's got in the plan. Yeah, he and he like you know he didn't know me from anybody, and and he was so kind, and just we talked for a while, and and uh, I've since talked with him before, and and uh, he's writing my novel now. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot wait to read that book. It's it's gonna be awesome. Um, so but I've so got what a question. Going on? What are some things? Some things you were doing before joining. Did we taxi. say what step five was? Did I miss uh, that? Yeah, so step five is acting like a professional. So oh, acting be, like a, a professional. professional. So you write to me, forget, repeat, and act, act like professional. professional, so that you will be perceived as a professional. Because it really, all this other stuff can be blown out of the water if you're a jerk or right. act unprofessionally. Out. Don't be a jerk. Yeah. Ooh. Just don't. Don't be write a jerk. to me, forget, repeat. Don't be a jerk. Um, Boom. Boom. Mic drop. Don't be a jerk. Uh, oh, here's a great example. I made some notes about this. I see people, this is about being a jerk. I see people putting bad and wrong information about the music industry all over the internet. People tend to believe what they see in print. So I think that there are a gazillion musicians out there who could be making money doing what they love, but they don't even try because they read this crap and they believe it. It stifles them and holds them back. Mm -hmm. They read stuff like every label and publisher is just out to rip you off. You know, mm -hmm. I, I hear that all the time. Well, you know, if you guys forward my music, aren't they going to steal it? Aren't they going to screw me in a contract or something? Um, and, and people just use that as that thing that stops them from even getting out of the gate. Right. Another thing that I see that's really kind of mind-blowing because it happens with people that are not 15 years old is cyberbullying. And one of the hmm. examples that I see that really hits home for me because I own the company is when people put positive things about Taxi on there are various forums out there and they put positive things about taxi. It's shocking to me how these people will descend on them and go, oh yeah, you probably work for them or somebody, you know, Lasco right. paid you to say that. Right. And, and it intimidates people who would otherwise say, you know what, like everything that you said on the show today, people are intimidated to say that because they're going to get smacked down by these troll jerks. Yeah. Um, Trolls suck. Yeah, but, you know, it, that goes with the, and don't be a jerk thing. Yeah, under, don't be a jerk. Because what they don't realize is while they're busy being an officious troll <laughs> and, and doing this because maybe they weren't successful with Taxi or right. maybe they're just naturally jerky, right. they are killing their own chances of ever, even if they follow these steps and they do everything right and their music is great, people remember who the jerks are. Yeah. And and yeah. I think you know enough library owners uh, to know right. they won't work with jerks. Right. They your music could be incredibly good, but they don't want to work with you if they think that there's any chance that you're going to go online and trash them someday. Right. Oh, you didn't submit me for that movie thing, you know, and then they go on whatever and tell people. So if an unsuccessful and bitter, so <laughs> if. Uh, let's see, it's a bad so, combination. Yeah, so if I'm unsuccessful and bitter and I'm publicly bashing a company like Taxi or any other company for that matter, and you come along and tell the truth to show some company in a positive light from actual first-hand experience, I'm going to call you names, call you a liar, and do everything in my power to discredit you so that my lies stand up. Who would want to work with you if you're that person? Right. Uh, so it shows that you are unprofessional and you're trying to be in an industry of professionals. So you've just killed your own chances. So what are some positive things that you think people can do? And again, I didn't prep them on any of this stuff. So if you don't no have a quick answer, uh, what are some positive things that you can do to help, that people can do to help bolster their image as a professional? Well, I, I mean, first, if you're in a situation where you don't understand what you're supposed to do, you don't understand the protocol, you don't understand what is acceptable to ask or to, to say, reach out to some people in the forum. Reach out to, to someone that you know is, is further along than you and say, hey, is this okay? Like, I remember the very first thing in 2012, we were uh, like in December, like the 23rd or the 24th, it was like right before Christmas, uh, just like a day or two before uh, we got a thing from ABC and they wanted a song that I had posted on Bandcamp. And it's actually a song that I had composed for a taxi listing that was uh, didn't get forwarded or anything. It just, but I made it and I was like, ah, oh, this is kind of cool, threw it up on Bandcamp. Someone found it, came to me and said, hey, we'd like to use this this Friday. It was like Tuesday or wow. it was like, right after Christmas or right before Christmas 
um, Christiana Amanpour. Oh, okay. For a, it was a something about a Bible in the the Middle East in the three different cultures. How many how it many was, styles of khaki clothing can that <laughs> woman wear? <laughs> a lot. She rocks them all. Uh, and and so like oh my gosh, and I'm like. What should I even be asking in this situation? Like, because they were like the producer, the guy who was in charge was like emailing me directly. Wow. So I'm like, that was where I started. It. I'm like, taxi works. Holy crap! You know, I'm like talking with a producer, and that does not happen all the time. I mean, that doesn't happen to me very, very often. It doesn't but, happen to a lot of people very often. Right. Yeah. But I reached out to. I think I reached out to Dean. And, and, and one or two other people, and they said, and I said, what should I be asking for? They, they said something about gratis. I'm like, what does that mean, free? <laughs> I'm like, should I be doing it? And they said, you should ask. You should ask for a little bit of money. Usually they have something budgeted. And so I did. I was kind of bold, and I, and I just sort of said, hey, um, uh, is there any way I can get something for this? And then they called me and said, you know, we're, of course, we're, the producer actually called me and said, you know, we really like your song, so when the, when the lawyer calls, you can ask for so they gave me ins- wow. insider information. I was like, sweet. Better hope they're not watching. <laughs> no, this yeah, episode. no, they were just really. It was really cool, and they were trying to help me out and, and explain how it worked and what was reasonable to ask for. And 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 the people at Taxi giving me good advice, and and I asked, and then I made some money from it. Nice. And Pedro, holy crap! I I, went, I was up in Big Bear with my family. I ran down the hill, got my hard drive, came back up. Or, wow. or something, or got up so that you I could... you got to understand, this isn't a hill like you would see in a golf course. He's talking yeah, about... Yeah, this was, it was like a couple hour drive down and yeah, back up. it's a real mountain. And, and, and I, I ran down, and I forwarded, like, files to Pedro. I'm like, can you remix some... That, that was actually kind of where... I don't know if that was the second thing we had done. We did another song that was kind of our, our hit. And then, um, <laughs> we've got a hit. Uh, our Dove, Dove Pilot is our band. By the way, DovePilot.com, check that out, too. And vote for Pedro. Vote for Pedro. <laughs> that really, we need a t-shirt for that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> although that shirt already exists. But, uh, and uh, then he helped do that. And that was, I learned a lot on how to be professional there from what I should be asking. Um, and I've learned more over the years, like, don't bombard or just send random unasked for emails to people. You know, like, learn what they want from you. Like, I've had several who said, okay, hey, if you have something new, send it to me. I'd like to listen to it. Some of my library owners want that. They want right. me to send them new stuff. And and then and some, uh, they only send out, here's what we need, and then send it in. And and some of those, I send something, then I never hear from them again. And that's okay it, because I'm okay with writing, submitting, forgetting, repeating. And I know that a right. professional does that and doesn't stress out about And you can always find another home for it. I can always find another home for it, unless it was an exclusive. Unless it was exclusive, in which case I just move on and write another song in the same style. So I get a call. I got a call a week or so ago from a library owner who I hold in very, very high esteem, and, and we are confidants to each other and like each other on personal level and business level in every way possible. And excuse me, a library owner um, said. I just got off a phone call with a taxi member that was forwarded to us, and the music is right on target. Uh, and, and this person's picky. Not it. The music can't just be good. It's got to be good and right for that catalog. Mm-hmm. So that's the standard. And the the member said to him, "How do I know you're legitimate?" Um, <laughs> Prove, prove to me, I mean, first of all, you could go to the company site and see all the placements, but how do I know that I want to be with that company? And I thought, oh, man, that's embarrassing. I wish that person had gone on the forum and asked that question because it's a legitimate question. It's just that was an act of being unprofessional. You don't ask. Yeah, it's uh, weird. You, like, even after that phone call, you could have gone and said, okay, so I just talked with... Uh, company and I wasn't sure if they could have called me. Right. They could have called the staff. They could have called you. You they can call have... Taxi. You can call and they will help you with these questions. Like we do. That's the thing they do. Yeah. So this is a great. It's such a great resource. People use it. Use it or lose it. You got to make the call, yo. So, but let's play some music. Um, I want oh, you sure. guys to fire off some questions. Um, take a little beat and come up with a really good question. We don't have a whole lot of time. We got like twelve minutes, and I want Stephen to play some of his stuff. Um, so while he's queuing something up, why don't you guys type some questions, and we'll try to make that all work.
All right, so um, the first thing I'm going to play for you is an unfinished piece that I'm writing with Amanda West. Who's in the audience as Hi, Amanda, Am- again. Amanda Hi. Ireland. So uh, this song is not done. It has a nonsense vocal, and it was just one of these things where I was doing it for the, the get your the G-Y-A-W-S, uh, get your ace writing songs. And um, I had an idea, and I liked it. It had a cool vibe to me. And then um, I had Amanda write lyrics. And there's, this doesn't even have her lyrics. So, Amanda, do you have no need to be ashamed of what the random stuff I'm singing? Um, and when he says nonsense lyrics, it's not just like placeholder. Yeah, placeholder. Okay. What do you know? I find Sharon so long, patient, no sin, and hard to be able to decide. The dude, the bad side, the right show, and the hard road to find. Hard to die, the right show, and the hard road to find. Dice, everybody, so hard, so hard, so long, the road to find. I'm going to critique myself and say, man, it took a long time to get to the chorus on that. <laughs> if I were doing the taxi critiquing of a song, I would instantly, like, I, even when I was listening to it before, I'm like, wow, dude, this whole thing is like, it's too long. It takes too long to get there. And I know because I was jamming when I did this that I just liked it and I was kind of feeling a groove. So I know that I'll probably cut the intro in half and then I'll cut that whole thing. I'll cut a whole half off of that. So I can get to this the chorus faster. And was this a case of you didn't have something you weren't writing at a target in this case, you just walked in your studio. You know what? This was actually there was a taxi okay, there was a taxi listing and it was it was Wolf of they put Wolf of Wall Street and they mm. said Oh yeah. There was a cool song and it was kinda like a rock it was almost like Black Keys meets a Kanye or something. I forget what the description was. It was kinda like a hip hop over this kind of cool so that was what inspired this. Got it. Um, but then it became its own thing. Okay. And I just, I just said, well, you know what? I don't, I don't think this is actually right for the listing because so there was did, other songs. You didn't pitch the square peg in the I round didn't. hole, but you developed the hole. But I developed or the hole, right? Okay. <laughs> I developed a new, yeah. a new size, and and this will be a good blues, black keys style yeah, blues rock, blues rock song. That when it's done, I'm going to pitch it to my libraries, and hopefully, I'll see something on Taxi to pitch it to too, because I'm. I really like it. It's a popular genre. You can't go. Yeah, wrong with you that. can't go wrong with that. So, um, um, so there's one. Okay. So questions. Um, I know we were gonna field some questions. Hi, Patty Boss. Natasha and Amanda and Charles and Casey Hurwitz, my many times collaborator, also and Ethan and all you guys and and I know I owe uh, Terry. I owe you a. I failed. I owe everyone something. I think. But um, I'm looking. I don't see any questions. If the people watching the archive tomorrow or thereafter, like, why does Lasko yeah, look like up. a fish with his yeah, mouth? Yeah, I'll pull up another. Uh, I'll pull up another. Story. So um, I had construction done at my house, um, and wait, there we go. And the one thing I couldn't do uh, because I couldn't record my live music, I literally had like this much space right here, like my my computer, and jam my speakers here. And it was in on my bedroom with my wife, and we moved into my son's bedroom, and he moved into our living room. That's construction. Oh, you didn't make him sleep out in the backyard in the hammock? <laughs> yeah, or that. That was the next track. That was the next stop. So I thought, I'm going to try to write some EDM. I like EDM. I know it's loop. a lot of it's loop and sample-based. I like messing around with that stuff, and I wanted to do more with it. And so like, I had three months where I wasn't going to be able to use my studio like I normally do. So I thought, I'm going to download a like a plug-in for my Pro Tools that focuses on EDM. I'm going to pull, I'm going to download a set of samples and I'm going to just create something. So this is, uh, it's called Absolute Traction. And uh, this is my first EDM tune.
I'm doing hand gestures in the background. I thought you were scratching your armpit. <laughs> So yeah. Anyway, so there's a uh, there's my little EDM track, and I see we have some questions rolling through. Um, so um, this one caught my eye as well. Question about Taxi. I'm seriously considering joining, but the preview listings I've seen appear to be seeking more full songs. Would this be good for composers with interest in creating film scores or cues? Um, Man, you must not be looking at the instrumental section of our listings. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff. For probably 30% of all of our listings are instrumental. So yeah. we don't yeah. run listings uh, for people looking for people to score films. They, we will run listing if somebody is looking for score-like material, but not for employment listings where people um, are looking for, to hire somebody to score a film. That's a whole different world than what we normally deal with. Uh, and then somebody else asked a question. Oh man, now there's but a Vela nine one one. I would say one thing you could definitely do also is find, depending on what city you're in, find out where the local film programs are, film schools. Hook up with some like indie directors, people that are starting, and 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 say, hey, I compose music, and and start that way, forming relationships with people. Um, and c as far as cues go, boy, Taxi is great for cues. They're always looking for cues. And as you get into some libraries, there's libraries that are specifically instrumental cues. You know, that's the, that's the thing they do. So um, that's definitely a route you could go. Somebody asked uh, a question that's flown way by now about, you know, if, once you're in a library, probably through a Taxi submission and you get stuff picked up and you've got Entree there, do you still go through Taxi to get to that library? Um, there are two schools of thought on that. I'm curious. I'll, I'll chime in, but what's your... Oh, you know? once I get something... So, so let's say I get through to Library X, mm -hmm. and now do I continue submitting things to Library X? Uh, it depends on what the library asked of me. If they said, hey, we'd like to hear more of your music, yep, absolutely. Right. If, if, they're, if they're like they really needed that one specific thing, I just move on and keep writing and submitting to other things. Um, there are definitely some libraries that I am now in that I feed mm -hmm. semi-consistently because they've they've worked for me and they've gotten placements for me and um, uh, so I know like for songs I go here for instrumentals I'll go here like these my instrumentals seem to work well in this particular right. um, yeah there is a or whatever. I don't know of a single library that does it all well they seem to yeah. have their areas of expertise and success right. and, and it varies over time yeah. depending on what kind of shows are popular on air like five years ago there were libraries that wouldn't touch um, reality TV and now some of these kind of a little bit snooty I only want songs from artistes libraries are now like we'll take all the instrumental you got because they found out they're making half their money with instrumental stuff so my feeling on that is Look, if you've got a relationship with a library and they're reaching out to you, absolutely send stuff to them. Uh, on the other hand, there are times that they run listings with us because they haven't been able to find what they need with their composers that are already in their catalog. So uh, they'll, they'll run a listing with us and, because they don't have it and they need to find it. Sometimes it's a combination. They reach out to people that are already writing for them, and they reach out to Taxi simultaneously because they know that not everybody who's in their catalog, or not every Taxi member is in their catalog yet. Most aren't. So it's a combination. Um, yes, music caterbone, music library equals music publisher. Um, music library infers film and television. Uh, a library is a publisher that does stuff differently than what a publisher like Warner Chapel would do in the record side of the industry. Um, if a, are you talking about this one? If a library, what if a library takes exclusive and never and they never sell it? Um, uh, who asked that question? Um, uh, M M Ladend. Okay. M Ladend. Um, what if a library takes exclusive uh, use of your song and never and they never sell it? That's one of the risks, but that's also the part of the right submit forget repeat. Um, many of the libraries that are exclusive have what's called a like a reversion, yeah. which means like it's exclusive for three years or it's exclusive for one year, and then you're free to send them a written thing saying I'd like to request to remove this song from the library so that I can pitch it elsewhere because it doesn't look like anything's happening with it. Um, 
And sometimes you, you shouldn't do that necessarily because if you don't leave it in long enough, you may, it may need to be there for a few years just or to find 13, or 14, 14 years. Yeah. You might need right. it there 14 years. What if Matt had taken that out? Right. Right. I know. That's why I write, submit, forget, repeat. Move write, on. submit, forget, repeat. So uh, I, I'll, I'll be honest. When I have an exclusive submission, I definitely think about it a lot more. Mm -hmm. It tends to make me up my, my game a little mm -hmm. uh, because I know that... It's uh, less or, disposable. You know what I love? I love working with a collaborator because when I would do it with a collaborator, I don't. it's a psychological thing, but when we both submit a song that we kind of worked on together and I give it to someone for exclusive, I'm sort of like, you know what? It's okay. It's... It's, we both worked on it. It's moving out there. It's going to do... It's going to... I'm diversifying. You know, I, right. I've got some in this. I've got some in this non-exclusive. I've got some in this exclusive. Stocks, bonds, and real estate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's... it's. I'm, I'm, I'm getting it out there in, in different uh, realms, and and I'm not worried about it. I, look, if you believe in a song and it is your heart and soul, you know, I mean, think twice about it. Look at the library. Look at look at their track record. What are the songs they're placing? Or you may not even you know for that you may want to hold out and try and get it with somebody like you know Warner Chapel or Universal um, to pitch it to Beyonce or, or right. some big artist. Right. If you feel that you've got that once yeah. in a lifetime hit, treat it differently. You don't yeah. want to generally put that once in a lifetime hit in a yeah. library. And so with write, submit, forget, repeat, uh, like uh, I don't want to be a hypocrite and say like I just write songs and flip off and move on. <laughs> like I, I have a song called Time Ain't On Your Side that's on the link that I said earlier, newcoolnow.com, and then click on my face for those of you that have joined later. Um, and there's one song called Time Ain't On Your Side. Oh, I guess I'll pull it up. But um, it, it's one of those songs that I spent uh, so long on it. I mean, a ridiculous amount of time. Probably too much. I probably spent too long working on the song, but I really felt like it was special. And I'll tell you what, it's my one of my most placed songs. It's been... I'll receive a check for $500. I'll receive another check for $500 or $750 from these different, just that I didn't even know about. Let's it just it. came. So this is the song. Do I know this one? I think you know this one. <laughs> Audio levels not exploding. <laughs> On the border. <laughs> So anyway, you can hear the whole song at uh, stevenwesleygals.com. At what? stevenwesleygals.com or go to newcoolnow.com and then you can hear the rest of it. But that's, so that's a song. I play drums, I play guitar, I play bass. Pedro remixed this for me, by the way. And that, for me, I, when this song was recorded, 2012, okay. and submitted, um, this was also written, I think, looking for a, a, a blues, rock thing. blues rock thing back then. And um, Sons of Anarchy. We used to run a ton uh, of listings for them. Yeah, now I could kill with that. No, but it, it's been used over and over again. It gets used all the time. I mean, uh, we have one song. Pedro and I have one song um, that's on the list, and it's called Walk, Stroll, Jive. And it's one of those songs that it's, I think it's like a recurring character in the show, and every time that character's uh, on the show, because it's used. Well, I look, and it's like 10, 15, 20 of just that song being used. So I'm like, okay. And this was another one that was like just a. We just cracked this off in a day, you know. It wasn't like. We didn't spend a whole lot of time on it. Yeah, that was me singing, by the way, Mark, on that last song.
Do you clean up your files when you submit to Charlie? Notice the simplicity. Yeah. Little B section. That was the producer, Pedro. The hand claps there. Ah. It was a great way to bring up that repeat of that section again. Make it interesting. Classic example of what we talk about in listings all the time. You know, yeah. The, um, it's layering building. Forward momentum, all that stuff. <laughs> right, release, submit. <laughs> no, that's not bad. X for rocks. Um, so, Charlie Wilson, you said something about, do you clean up file names? Uh, you look, checked out the file name or looked at the <laughs> file name? You know, I definitely do a better job of that now. Prop that particular song, no. Why? Because he writes, submits, forgets, repeats, and, and acts, acts professionally. professionally. Yeah, I'm working on that. I'm working on that uh, every time I interact with someone, um, trying to be more professional. Writing cues. Like, I really didn't understand the whole concept of cue writing, but, man, that's a great way to start. It's a great way to get your feet wet. Um, you're not writing. You're not dealing with lyrics or melody. Wow. You can write. You only need to write, really, two parts. Yeah, an A Eight section. measures of A, eight measures of a B section. So we call it A and B section, and it's just... Two parts that feel good together. It keeps this song has a very consistent mood throughout. Yep. It's it's up. It's it's moving. It's a little edgy. Um, that song we get used so much. It gets used so. I mean, we submitted that in 2014, I think, like or 2012, or I don't know. Like it was super a long time ago. Oh, I only uploaded it four hours. Even ago. the <laughs> I uploaded it four hours ago, but it's been, it's 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 been in a library for for one, years and years. One thing I talk about on the show a lot is title and how titles can tell you what you're about to hear. This is called Walk Stroll Jive. I was just thinking, before I even noticed the title, I was thinking this would have been great in Let's Be Cops. Um, the two guys put on their uniforms mm -hmm. and they're going out and the, you know walking down the sidewalk. Yeah. They, they dressed up for Halloween and then decided to be real cops. It's a good title. You know, yeah. good titles are is a great like. Uh, so Seth Littlefield and I have one that we do. We I don't know how we fell into this, but we do. We we feel like we do sports rock when we do like we do yeah. rock, like we've just naturally fallen into like I write these like riffy things and then he kind of puts the backbone to he it. Used to be a linebacker. Yeah, <laughs> look at me. <laughs> if it's all here, then yes. <laughs> Um, and we wrote a song called Massive Aggressive, okay. which is a killer title. I mean, come on, right? I'm sure. Uh, yeah. Anyway, we were really proud of the title. And I think the title got it usage. Yeah. Like, it's just a cool, it's a cool because song. It people sounds stand. massive. You know, right. musicians would love to believe that every music supervisor, every library owner, listens everybody to every on, minute of your song. Right. And that they listen to everything in the list. Yeah, no, they right. scan for the stuff that jumps out and they go, that's probably a good bet. And they're delighted when it is. Right. Because if you took the time to think through a title and actually have, there's artistry in that too. Um, to yeah. create something that, it's a hook. It's kind of like you, you, you're not supposed to judge a book by its cover, but we all do. We all look at something, we see it, and it, look, that looks interesting to me. Oh, hey, that looks kind of cool. I want to check that out. Um, and so yeah, no. a good song is... When a, we did the Robin Frederick books... This is a great book, too. This uh, is a great book, which I also have. Uh, when we did this book, speaking of judging a book by the cover, I literally went to a Barnes & Noble and got myself politely asked not to do it and to lead the store, if I remember correctly, I took my camera and was shooting the spines of all the books in the music section. Oh. Literally took pictures of every inch of the music section just so we would know how to design the spine to be the one oh. that jumped out. You did a little taxi technique of? of but with, with the book. Yeah, You I looked guess. at, you, you right. analyzed at the, the genre yeah. and the market and then said, hey, how are they doing that? Yeah. What is a professional... Yeah. Look, look like, and then made one. It's no accident that the spine and the coloration, lime green, all that stuff. So, same thing as scanning a list for a good toe. Yeah. So, um, what other questions are out there? We've, uh, we see? really got to wrap it up. So oh, we got to wrap. This let's up. do like one or two more, and then we're out of here. Uh,
if you can, <laughs> Tasha says, uh, if you can't afford the book right now, you know what? If you can't afford 30 bucks to invest in your career, <sighs> 30 bucks we're talking. There's so many great online resources for sure. Um, but if you go to books that are like any of these books, like so Dean has a series of books, de Demystifying, he's got Demystifying, what's the other one? It's Demystifying the, the, genre. Um, the genre and Demystifying the cue. This was really eye-opening and every chapter, very, very practical. Super great book. If you're an artist and you just want to get out there more, I can't recommend this enough. It's called Platform, Get Noticed in a Noisy World. Uh, talking about how to use your social media in a way that isn't irritating to people and uh, develop something. Um, it's really good. It's, it's excellent. This is another great book along with that Stephen King book. Let's make this the last question of the day because it's a great one. Uh, do you register your cues with a performing rights organization before or after it's picked up? Yes. <laughs> um, uh, it depends on the publisher. Some of my publishers do all of that, and they handle all of that, and some of them ask me to uh, register on my side. So if you had to guesstimate a percentage of those who ask uh, you to do it versus those uh, who do it on... 50? I mean, I okay. don't know. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a lot of them I don't... They do all of it. They handle, like, the... the ASCAP registration. We have a lot of members, and this was shocking to me when I found out a few years ago, but a lot of our members who are especially instrumental cue um, submitters or, or producers um, don't even bother because they consider the stuff kind of disposable. Um, it's like I can make another, you know, um, blues rock cue in, in a day. So ultimately I'm going to have 20 of them, so it doesn't matter that I need to register uh, every I haven't registered now. copyright since my first ba rock band CD in 1995. And most of the time, the libraries, <laughs> when you know, especially libraries that are going to assign a new title to it, yeah. are going to register that title. So, uh, I'm not saying that you always want your uh, right. stuff, um, your copyright. Um, you know, the, the what do they call it? The poor man's copyright. I've been told by somebody, a big-time lawyer, that it's better than nothing. But mailing it to yourself or whatever. Yeah, but he also said in the same breath. Just register the copyright because, but I again, know, if it's if it's something if uh, your Beyonce yeah the, right thing. if I was doing something like that you know I might That's I would probably mean. consider registering ninety the seconds of don't 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 da, da, you know yeah like, I'm just not I'm just not even worried about it I've written a whole bunch of songs since then <laughs> I should probably write a few more like that Pedro we should probably write a few more like this right <laughs> submit a good one. forget repeat. Um, Stephen, thank you so much. This was uh, you inspire me, and, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm well, likewise. Thank I'm, you. Thank you. I'm, I'm I'm just delighted that you are who you are. You're very true to yourself, and, and that's hard to be in life. And uh, and the fact that you voted for Pedro. I mean, somebody's got to help the poor. I guy. voted for Pedro <laughs> multiple times. <laughs> we love you, Pedro. Anyway, um, thank you, uh, and thank we you. will see you back again. Enjoy the rest of your summer. Hope the construction is over or not still going on? It's, we get our final, we're hoping for the final approval next week. Okay, great. So I'm back in my studio. Oh, good. So that's great. But, uh, All right. Well, yeah. with that, I bid you adieu, but not before I say, don't forget to subscribe and like us. And I have no idea what I'm doing for the show next week, but we will fill you in. So see you next week for another exciting episode of Taxi TV Live, baby. Yeah. <laughs>